Good. 12 years in the year of the elephant. Who here, and not counting today's elephant, because of course every one of you have one, who has an elephant, an elephant? Wow, that's almost half of it. How, how do you, where do you get them? Conferences along the way? That's, that's kind of incredible. Um, this old guy here is the, uh, one of the uh, only elephants who gets a name, and that's what we call the trisailleur. That's actually French, no one understands that, even in French. That's the oldest one, that's the first one. So for, for a good six months, I had this elephant in my home and two toddlers, one and three. You can imagine the torture test on the elephant. So after six months, the elephant was still alive. I knew I could give that to developers. So we're here, yeah, because the elephant has been there for a long time, but the whole story of the elephant goes far beyond just plush toys. So that's what we're going to talk, to talk together today. The story of the elephant started a long time ago, 15 billion years ago or so. Then there were, of course, a few events along the way, including the foundation of the Czech Republic, I guess. So I tried to make a, a flag with the uh, elephant here. Sorry for that, guys. Um, the elephants are not good at making flags. Um, I get lots of heat from people from Canada also about that, but uh, hopefully it looks like close to it. So maybe next time when you design your flag, you think about you know, being able to do it with elephant. That will help me a lot. Thank you. Um, but then, of course, we had the, the birth of PHP itself, 1995. And uh, quite shortly after, like three years later, uh, there was one guy who was actually not a programmer who got introduced to PHP, but he had, he had no knowledge. He was just a designer, so he started playing with the, uh, with the letters, with the logo we had at that time, which was designed by a Canadian guy, Colin Vibrock. And that was very simple, okay, PHP, we can't do much with that, so just uh, the letters together with the round circle. Um, I could do that, I guess. Well, I didn't, anyway. But Vincent, look at the, um, at the logo. I say, okay, this PHP and the first part of the letters, the P itself looks like the ear of an elephant and it's Trump. And then the last P looks like a butt. And then in between, you can actually morph the H more or less into the, the first front pose and the, the last uh, leg. So this is how it evolved by drawing on paper from the letters into the elephant and into something that's actually nice. And that's basically the, the beginning of the life of the elephant. Um, nowadays, most of the time, we mention the elephant as being the plush toy, but it's actually larger than that. The, the logo itself, the fact that people recognize the elephant as the, the core value of PHP was already there because that was 1988, so that was about eight years even before we got the first plush toy. And strangely enough, well, at least uh, everyone else recognized that. It started being used a lot more than even the logo, so it was kind of being recognized as an alternative logo. And everyone in the world used it on their user group. Um, it went all across, uh, all across the world. Yeah, I'm sorry I didn't get the, the right uh, logo, but my daughter also have that t-shirt, so... Um, even, even the people from New Zealand, who apparently draw very poorly, they, they managed to put an elephant on that. Or maybe it's a kiwi, I don't know. Um, so it, it got recognized, and that's where, um, that's where the elephant, the, the, the meaning of the elephant started. So when we started doing the, um, the, the plush toy, it, it was based on that, and it was based on the fact that going to different conferences at that time I was starting to, uh, to be on the speaker tour and I started floating the idea and having people say, yeah, we, we should do uh, something fluffy, something 3D, something a little different. Um, I think the, the Tux, the Linux Penguin at that time was also uh, available. But um, it was around, so hey, why not? Why not do one, one for us too? And so the idea was crazy, and I think that's what I like with the PHP community. I mean, it starts usually with something completely crazy, and then suddenly morphs into something that's actually available. But the first feedback I got was, of course, for my own user group. I was living in Montreal at that time, so 
P2P Quebec was already a large conference. It's already settled. Uh, we had a large group, dynamic group. So I went to the group and I said, oh yeah, we would like to have, um, I would like to do a plush toy. And they, they got a feedback immediately was, no, that's crazy, don't do that. And that's, that's, Ma, uh, that's Jan Larive. Um, I think he was there on the conference two years ago at least. Um, we met, we met on, the, on the breakfast. So he, he's still running the, 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 the Kung Fu conference, but I just said, no, that's crazy. So when, when you want to start those kind of pro crazy projects, don't get stopped by people that say no, because that's not the driving force. The driving force is what's pushing you toward doing it. And the thing is, even though the local group said, ah, no, we won't do that, there were all over, all over the world people who actually say, okay, I, I will go with you, I'll take a box of 50, a box of 100. Um, at that time, we had no, no crowdfunding stuff, so I actually did it manually, which meant that basically I had a text file, an email in a text file, and I was really spamming people all across the world. So I, I have the fond memory of getting a mail which I actually lost, but that read like that. Some things they say, okay, I got that. It was in my spam fold folder. Um, I'm, I've never been caught by spam, but this one, I think I want it to happen. So please tell me you're real. And I, I was lucky I got the feedback really fast. So I said, oh yeah, yeah, I'm real. We hooked up on IRC and we talked and said, yeah, we're serious about doing the elephant. So, and they said, okay, we want, we want a box of 50. So we actually had to ship a box of 50 to New Zealand later. But that was people would not create, uh, believe that. It was like, no, no one's done that, so who's going to do that? Anyway, um, from there, um, I collected basically 3,000 pre-orders. The, the idea was we do a pre-order and then we double the amount. And that's the time where I had to tell my wife that at some point we would have 6,000 plush toys at home. Now, if you want to stress your marriage, you know, um, yeah, you can try that, you know. Um, so, yes, that's, uh, yeah, she's still with me now, so she was taking care of the elephant too yesterday night. So, that's good. That's good. But anyway, um, I got that, we, we, that's, that's a lot. I mean, when you think about it, 6,000 plush toys, how much is that, like nine cubic meters? Yeah, so I got the first email saying, oh, can we put a 20 meter long truck in, in front of your house? And that's where I realized that I did something wrong. <laughs> so I said no, and they said, okay, we send a smaller truck. So they sent a smaller truck. Um, it was actually small, and the second thing I didn't uh, realize first was that they would deliver the, 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 the goods to my home, well, that was my home at the time, but they would not unload it. So I end up with the truck, a nine cubic meter of plush toys, my wife and the driver. So we decided, well, he, he helped us, but um, he got the boxes and the box are half a meter large. I don't know how, how tightly they pack it any, uh, nowadays. But at that time, we got 50 elephants in a box like that. That makes a huge box. So the guy was inside, it's a Canadian guy, strong. He would grab the box, threw that to me. I would catch it, and on the other side, there was my wife inside at the end of the garage, and I threw that to my wife, and she's like half my size. That really looked like I was hurling rocks at her. And she, <laughs> that, was, that was crazy. That was also the, the start of the, of the legend. I don't know how you do that anymore, but I know many companies after that who did their own generation of elephant relied on this tradition of unloading the truck. That's the delivery. We've been waiting nine months which is a lot faster than real elephants, but we've been waiting nine months to, from the idea to production and delivery, and you have the truck comes come to your house, well, your company now. You have, you've comes, and you have to unload it, and that's a moment where the, 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 the company actually gather and takes ownership of the elephant. So the people in, in Germany from workshop, from shopware, they said, oh yeah, we got the, ele the elephant, and we did as you said, we, we asked the developer to come and, and help us unload. But the truck park really next to the storage room, like 10 meters, and they could fit like two or three developers. They had 60 of them. Everyone wanted to participate. So everyone went down and there were like way too many people and not enough elephants. So what they decided is to do a chain. So the 200 meters across the parking lot and ended up in the storage. 
that is part of the legend of the elephant. You have to participate. You have to be there. I don't know how you did it when you, you got your boxes of, uh, of elephant, but that, that's part of, of the fun. Anyway, so that first day, the first day of the, of, the, of the elephant, I got those many boxes. I could not believe it myself. So I, I had to do the first picture. I grabbed a box, 50 of them. Wow, that's brought upstairs, put them a, a, little, a little bit everywhere in the house and started taking pictures. And of course, the time flies, so, oh, three o'clock. So I have, I have to go to daycare, fetch my kids. So I go there, get them, bring them back. As usual, I have to undress them and they make a mess, but they already run into, into the house. So I start cleaning and I start listening to them running around, crazy, giggling. And then I forget, oh yeah, there are elephants. So I suddenly go in the house itself and then I see the two of them with like five elephants in each hands, running, look daddy what we found, we found elephants. We are going to keep them all. My wife was on the other side, and that's not going to happen. So yeah, of course, 6,000 elephants in the, in the garage, I had to, uh, to do something, that's, that's the original picture. I usually use it at the end of the session. <coughs> that was the first. So, we, we had to, um, to get rid of the elephant from the garage, so I started shipping them everywhere. And um, that was the time where they started their world tour. So elephants actually started a world tour and they went to many, many different places. So, um, oh, did I? Yeah, it's coming. Um, they, they, well, they went to Europe, they went to Asia, they went to uh, Death Valley, um, they went away. They're coming back. Good. Uh, so under the sea, um, they went eating stuff all around the place. Well, this is Brazi Brazilian uh, pau de queso or something like that. Um, and from from um, from th they they were starting from Montreal, so they were up there. And so I started personally sending everywhere except maybe to Africa. I think I, I skipped this one for some reason. It took a long time before Africa would uh, get their first batch of elephants. But um, they even ended up in, in Antarctica. Yeah, penguins called and made an order. Actually, it's a longer story, but um, we, we, I went to Barcelona, which by itself was a story because um, Barcelona said, oh, we have 400 attendees, we want elephants, and can you bring them with you? It's like, from Paris? So I said, okay, I had, I had a full, I had literally had like a huge suitcase full of elephants and one toothbrush toothbrush in it. On the way back, it was full empty. Uh, but then, so I bring them, they have elephant. And one of the guys come to me and say, you know what? My girlfriend is a marine biologist. Um, she, she is going to go to Antarctica for studies um, next month. And they have, well, they, they have, of course, private items. They can bring. Maybe we can, we can have her get an elephant, the, uh, the elephant to Antarctica. But I say, yeah, why not? Get mine. I don't need it. Get mine and, and give it to her. So apparently, well, first elephant made a stop because Antarctica is also beer, but that's Brazilian stuff. Um, so the elephant actually went down in Antarctica and she was, at the end, she was studying penguins. So she managed to find a picture. So you have the penguins over there and you have an elephant. Um, there's, a, there's a close look of... <laughs> Now, at least we've got document for this one. So I've got like three pictures. I'm pretty sure they're not photoshopped, but I'm not really sure I can tell where it's really from. Anyway, so that's the, that's the part that has documentation. The, there's another part that's the legend. That's where the legend of the elephant uh, starts because I don't have any proof for that. But by the end of the mission, the marine biologist was called by the Spanish commandant and he's okay come here and you say, we've seen you going around with this plush toy. And she said, yeah, I'm taking pictures, but I do not disturb the penguins. He said, yeah, yeah, yeah it's not a problem. We want the elephant to stay. <laughs> so apparently the, there is currently one elephant owned by the Spanish army in Antarctica. Believe me, I never thought I would say that in a conference room, but that happened. Well, that's a legend. I can't, I can't prove anything. So just keep it. Do whatever you want with that. Anyway, so once they're done to Antarctica, once they've gone to everywhere in the world, what do they do? Well, they've got to go to places out of the world. 
So people started bringing the elephant everywhere in the world. So that's um, the little mermaid, right? Of course, uh, Bugs Bunny and uh, Tweety Bird. And, and there's also one of the questions for which I actually got the answer before asking Rasmus directly is that we got the special calendar of 2009. Yeah, we've got 12 PHP developer got naked and with just one elephant. We actually had three women in it. Uh, so you can imagine that it's not really easy to go up front to many people and say, oh yeah, can you, I want a picture of you and the elephant. And oh yeah, easy now? No, 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 I just want just you, nothing else. Oh. And then usually guys will look at me and say, yeah, I need, I, I don't need the small elephant, I need the big elephant. And that was pretty systematic. Of course, you can imagine that asking a woman out of the blues like, oh, get undressed and pick a picture of the elephant was kind of difficult. So the first one to ask, to be asked, was, it was difficult to go. So I, I had actually had a trick. I knew someone who could be game, which uh, who actually ended up in the, in the calendar. But I, I waited for her to be in the room and I asked someone else. And she overheard it and said, oh, yeah, I want to do it. So, okay, yeah, sure, of course, we need women, and then you can help me, you know, ask others. I say, yeah, yeah, but I don't need one elephant, one small elephant. I say, yeah, you need the big one. I say, no, 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 I need the three of them. <laughs> well, she ended up in the, elef in, the, in the calendar. But that's a private, so you have to ask people about, about it. <clears throat> so elephants started doing, keep, uh, kept on doing crazy things, like going into uh, cannons, um, tanks, I don't know if it's a real one, but it looks kind of dangerous. And of course, you know that uh, they are the one also handling the stuff, so that's probably very dangerous for both of them. Um, apparently, elephant also went down back in time. There are theories that say that dinosaurs were not extinct due to myth errors, but because the uh, dinosaurs couldn't chew the elephant. So some people use that as a proof. But it's not the case. Anyway, they started doing very dangerous things, things that are not, you know, good for your health. So it was time to, to take a break and stop. Okay. And um, this is how the, the big elephant got really flat. Uh, if you get the, the new ones, um, if you look at the, the one from PHP, it's really tough and strong. And you can this one is actually very flat because my, my daughter has been sleeping on it for several years. So it really looks like a tiger, it's very flat, it's very strange. Um, the thing is, it's not just for kids. I had to argue with the customs at some point that this plush toy was not for kids, but was for adults. And that really sounded a bad discussion, but I failed anyway, um, I had to, to abide. Um, so this is the elephant really, they, they have lots of other use. That's John Cockshall sleeping on the elephant. Apparently it's very comfy. Give it a try on yours, uh, maybe you like it. But once the elephant were done, you know, goofing around in the world, they decided that they had to go and do some actual work. And what are, what are they useful for? Um, the first thing, of course, they can review your code. But um, let me tell you that elephant were at the time where PHP 4 was still the rage. So they are going to give you, you know, pieces of advice are a little outdated. But on the other hand, I used it several times, um, for example, for motivation. We had a weekly challenge. Okay, this week, this is the one that, pri that brings the most classes. This week, it's the most unit test. This week is the one that closes the most bugs. And the big elephant would go from desk to desk. It's kind of a, kind of a competition. So that was useful. That was motivation. Everyone wanted the elephant for the next time. Um, I also remember that at some point in the company, the girls from accounting started asking why the elephant was going around. I didn't pay attention early because I, was, I didn't get the elephant, the developer would. But apparently the, the, the competition went really hard the following weeks. So that was one, 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 one motivation. But there are other stories where the elephant went too far. And that, that's a true story. And at some point, at some point um, we had to do a mission, expertise mission with a French bank. And you know, they are very strict. So there was a long process, commercial process for the sale. And we ended up with the final meeting with the VP from the bank and they had their whole development team. I had my own VP. They were both guys in the 50s. They were obviously, you know, used to uh, 
the no usual negotiation and talk. So long talk. I get bored. I'm I'm waiting for my turn, and I I suddenly get get caught by by the VP who said, "Okay, so Mr. Shaggy, you're going to do the expertise for our security. Why are you the best?" And I was like, "Oh, I have to answer something." Uh, I said, "Yeah, I'm the best because I do the the the, the PHP the best and." Here is a proof, and I actually brought the elephant on the table. That was one of the longest seconds in my life. The silence was really deep, and then the whole te dev team completely exploded in laughter. The, the, VP, the VP was angry, was like white angry, and he said, okay, I understood everything, you can go away and we'll tell you our decision. The part I didn't really evaluate was that the one that was really the most angry was my own VP. You don't do negotiation with plush toys, okay? If you have to bring something back from the keynote, don't bring plush toy to the negotiations. Not a good trick. Uh, so I got another five minutes of yelling, of being yelled at by him. But they say yes, so it was better afterward. But don't try that. So elephants are not good for negotiation, but they're really good at billboard. And they've been actually be changing colors and wearing a lot of different shirts and, and companies and stuff across the world. I mean, yeah. um, the, even the second generation was already uh, branded with Oracle. And then we are, we are usually at this, um, uh, this um, habit of putting L PHP on one side and the logo on the other side. So you could actually keep it community-like by showing one the right side and showing something else on the other one. So that was nice. And communities also, not just companies, but also communities started doing their own stuff. So you have other colors. Um, there's probably like 25 colors without the nuances. So it's, um, it's, uh, it's a lot of them, lots of new generation. I actually completely lost track of them. I think the last evaluation I had was around 60,000 elephants across the world, all together. Most of them are the big, the blue ones, like that, because they, they were the largest on the initial generation. But otherwise, there are really many, many companies have their own colors. Um, we also had um, lots of challenges with the elephant because just the, the amount of them. So if you want to make a world record, uh, this is the largest big elephant pyramid available. I don't know if you can beat that with the, the one from PHPC. I don't know if you have enough because we were the uh, amount of them and they are not stable enough. So big ones are kind of uh, unsturdy. The other one, it's a one hour job. You can ask the guy, it's Christoph Villeneuve, he's been uh, handling elephant crazily for, for a long time with me. Um, he actually spent an hour, you had to select the one at the bottom, which are the sturdy and the stable ones, and then you work up, you work um, your way up uh, to there, to the top. Six levels, no, seven. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven levels. Apparently, eight is not possible. But beside that, um, we also saw with the colors and the variations, the rays of the collector. And of course, once you realize there are 30, 40 different generations of elephants, people start collecting them. So who of you among the 50 of percent has more than two of them? Three? Four? So there's still five? <laughs> five elephants, right? Um, I don't know what, who has the, that, that's okay, you, you, can, you can lower your head. I know that you're going to be far. Um, yeah, they, they, they are, they, that's, a good, that's a good rainbow color, but there are 20 of them. I still have probably 50 or 60 of them at home myself, but I'm, I'm the one that got the first one, so I've got some special sources, I guess. But collectors actually just, you know, um, try to find them. Um, there will probably be, um, you know, Twitter tweets going around saying, okay, you, do you want the PHP? Uh, I can grab one and bring it to you in Vegas or in Brazil. So there will be exchange like There's even a website nowadays that allows you to tell people, oh, here is my herd with all the different variants. And the one I can, I can trade are there. Ele want. Ele want. It's a play on, pun, play on word. But there's a whole website for that. And it kind of makes it very, very strange feeling because those elephants nowadays are 25 euro each. Okay, depending on the sources, depending on the conference, you can have a value of 25 euros. How much is that? It's like 250 euros over there. 
it's a lot of money. I met people from developers from um, from Indonesia, and they say, yeah, 25 euros. Well, we we can eat a whole week three meals a day, and and not have a plush toy. So this is this is a game, and this is something that we're proud of because it's community part. But collecting them just for the sake of collecting them is not the important part. The important part is actually bringing them around, bringing them on travel, or I've, I've been to Java conferences with my big elephant under the elbow. I probably attracted some not so positive ad attention, but also I had people come to me and say, oh yeah, we also use PHP, and we started the discussion. That's where, that's where the value of the elephant here. It's kind of a cement, it's kind of a glue among us. Oh, you've got this one. I got the one from two years ago. And then you can start talking about something. You broke the, the ice. We also saw the raise of fake elephants. Um, yes, it's ugly. They are all ugly. So um, actually, you can look at them. If they're really ugly, that's a good sign. They're not making much attention. But imagine the people from China doing a, a generation of elephants. They are, they are actually produced, all of them currently in China. But they're made somewhere around uh, Shanghai. So people from the PHP community in, chi in China will actually have to have them produced in, in China, sent back to Europe, and then moved again to Shanghai. Plus the royalty thing. That's going to be too expensive. That doesn't make sense for them. So they, they produce them on locally, and then they have it locally. That, that makes sense. So the, the, this price is, is, a, is a problem with the elephant itself. It should be more available. It should be more available. But so there's a, a bunch of that. And nowadays, the elephant has completely changed, actually. Um, so this is, this is Vincent, so the guy I, heard, I told you initially. I actually never met him until I sent him three elephants. Never seen any picture. I didn't know how he looked like. That was the first picture of him I got. So that was also the first word I got. And I'm sure you don't know French, but there's not, much, not many words with that bitty I in it. Okay, so I was really excited to get the first elephant. Um, the company, well, initially I, I got the right to produce the elephant because, well, I was doing something crazy. And later it actually evolved. I, what, whatever I was doing in my garage uh, with my wife and throwing her boxes turned into a whole company. So they had a board of director, different department, um, they had accounting, they actually had a logistical storage. So you actually have the, those big elephants being sent over there, stored. And that ended up with this strange situation where the, the, the special elephants are actually easier to find than the blue ones. The generation like that, you come to a conference, someone is going to take care of ordering the whole generation of elephant and throwing, giving that away or selling it along the way. Okay. How does that work for the, the official ones? That does not work. No one is going to say, oh, I'm going to order 10,000 of them and keep them and just give, ship them as they, as they go. They, I sell maybe one or two a month. That's not much. There is no special event for it. It's the normal elephant. So there was only one company that would actually buy a wall stock, maybe 5,000 of them, and take years for them to get them rid away, to get rid of them away. So no one is asking for the blue elephant anymore. So the normal default elephant is hard to find. There's a leftover of 2,000, and they're probably going to stop doing that. So that's kind of, that's kind of weird. Um, Vincent also said that after 10 years, uh, almost 20 years, no one believes anymore that um, he's uh, the original uh, author of the elephant. So he, he may go to companies, he's doing peer job in general, but he knows PHP, he knows how it works, he knows people in the community, so they can, he gets some respect. But it happened to him that going to, to the company, people would say, oh, Oh, you have elephants. Yeah, yeah, those, uh, those elephants are from the PHP community. We, know, we, we like them a lot. And so, yeah, yeah. I, I draw them. I draw them. I'm the original author. And the, the guys, they were younger, and they look at him and say, no, I'm, I'm, if, you're, if you're the drawer of the elephant, I'm the queen of England. That's the classic joke. Um, they couldn't believe it because, well, it's 10 years ago. So things we were doing before are not things we can do anymore. I mean, they new generation of people also are coming, and that what they're going to do with the elephant is what they want to do. So here is the first picture of Rasmus. That was not your first elephant, right? No, I'm the one who sent it. Anyway, so the elephant currently has a value as a link for the community. And 
what we started doing recently, before you, you get better ideas, was to do family reunion. That was a family reunion. That was two years ago in PHP Benelux, where we asked, say, the elephant, the trisayel, who, wants, who was 10 year old at that time, wants to gather his family. And we asked collectors to bring them and have one meeting of the elephant. Can you spot how many different colors and shapes of elephant we have? Well, shapes is always the same, right? But we got those. And we see all the colors, different generations, different, um, even the last one, well, there was the, the, the Amphis. And there is one really special elephant that you probably won't, um, won't notice, which is this one. Why is it special? It's not strange color, it's not weird, it actually is kind of old. So this elephant looks like the one at the top, right? You can see that the plush is about the same. If you get a closer look, this is this one. This was the first generation elephant. That was my first time in PHP Benelux. And the guy come to me and I say, oh, wh what, did, where, what did you get? Telephone, he said, oh, I don't know, I remember ordering that somewhere in Canada. I say, yeah, that was probably me. Ten years later, this elephant, which was in my garage, which probably has been hugged by my daughters, was somewhere in Belgium. And we had the meeting. You see, you see they, in the eyes, they are very moved. But that was very moving to me, to imagine that what I did so long, a time, so, so long ago was, uh, was different, w was still there. Um, we also, on the same conference, had this strange meeting. So actually, we can do that nowadays, because at the moment, this is the youngest elephant, right? We have the youngest, and except for a few fallen ones, we have the oldest. And that was the case at the time. We had the first elephant and the last. And though we, we do that, and probably next week, someone new one, a new, a new, a new elephant will come. But, um, and you can see also the elephant still under the load. You can stack two of them uh, above. We'll try, we'll try that later. Anyway, so where to go now? Well, that's, that's your job. <laughs> we, had, we, had a number of, um, we had a number of success before, but the elephant will go where you will bring it, where, where, you, where you bring it. You have to find the new crazy idea and, and do other, th uh, other stuff with it. Um, I think I've done my, my share. This was the original picture taken 13 years ago. It took a long, long time to take the new picture with my daughter, but she's still, she still like the elephant. If you ever steal it with me, she will find you and kill you. So, thank you very much. You'll be the one probably eating that cake uh, later. So, please take the elephant and do something with it. That's the important part. Thank you very much.